Hello everybody, this is Pun, the Frugal Streamer, and I am going to show you how to set up Voice Meter Potato for dual PC streaming. Okay, this is a new version of Voice Meter, it just recently came out. I will provide the download link in the description below. Also, with a couple other videos, it shows you how to install some of the other things we're going to be needing what you will need for this okay you will need to first install voice meter banana version 2.0.4.1 i will give you the download link for that once you install voice meter banana on both your gaming pc and streaming pc then you can go and download voice meter potato it kind of uses some of voice meter banana software uh, files that sort of thing you, but you need to have that installed before you install voice meter potato okay and then follow the directions i will give you the videos for those separately on how to get those installed also you will need three uh, vir virtual audio cables now vb banana uh, vb audio has those you can download them uh, you can download one for free two will cost you a donation as little as a dollar okay uh, so, or I think it's five dollars actually now. You got that give you suggested pricings that you can pay. All right, so I'll give you those, and those are really the three, uh, the you know things that you're really going to need. Additionally, you're going to need streaming software, which you probably should already have. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you using Streamlabs OBS is the final output. So here's the deal first thing we're going to work on we're going to work on microphone um i think that's the first thing everybody should try to get fixed and that's the thing that i think is most important because that is your voice going out that's how you interface with everybody uh whether you're playing a game with them whether you're talking to them through your stream etc okay so that is the first thing we're going to do then we're going to show you how to set up your communications discord team speak we're going to show you how to set up your gaming audio uh and that's really it music i will show you um how to use how to get music back and forth um so i think the next thing i need you to uh understand is how i have my setup okay so do i have a dual pc streaming system okay i use voice meter on both my gaming pc and the streaming pc okay so currently the voice meter potato beta is installed on both sides um, I use three virtual audio cables on each PC. You're really only going to need them on the streaming PC, though. Okay, uh, the gaming PC, um, you can get away with I think one if I'm if I'm correct. You might not. I don't even actually. I don't even know if I even use them on the gaming PC. But we'll get through that later. Uh, then you're going to need. Uh, you know your discord installed whatever you're using now my microphone is installed on my streaming pc i have two webcams both of them are on my streaming pc okay my discord is also installed on my stream pc the only thing on my gaming pc that i use is what i have right here my headphones and that is it okay everything else is on the streaming pc now now if you have discord on your gaming pc you don't have to have you know have it on your streaming pc you can have it on your gaming pc it's just going to take you a little bit more uh getting around uh using vband to do that so but for this instance i just wanted to show you how my setup is and how i'm going to set this up uh so here's the point being with all of this more than likely your setup's probably not like mine so don't use my setup unless you have everything set up exactly the same way as i do um, if there's anything different more than likely my setup is not going to work for you okay previous uh tutorials that i have done in the past using the older versions of voice meter people have tried to mimic what i've done and it doesn't work for them because they don't have the same setup okay and that's you know it's just the way it is but i'm going to show you how mine works and let's go ahead now and let's start using the microphone all right so the first thing we're going to need to do before we work on our microphone is we have to set an an output okay that's why this is flashing red and right here right above hardware out uh, that way voice meter can configure itself so i am going to use the speakers that output from my sound card uh, in this case i have the default you know real tech uh audio on my motherboard so I'm going to go down here 
to my WDM Windows Digital Media speakers, real tech, high def audio. And also, I'm going to set that. Now, that automatically sets a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz and a, a buffer of 512. You can actually change this if you want to by going down to system settings. And I'm going to set everything to 48. I like 48. So go down here to preferred sample rate and click this and you can just change it to 48. Now this is the buffer defaults 512 for WDM. I'd recommend you leave this. Okay. That they, they set it for default for WDM for a reason. It works well with 512 um, MME. You can see the defaults 1024. So if you were to do an MME output, then, you know, of course that's what you would see 1024 here. Okay. So no reason to leave it uh, or, or to change it. Just leave it at 512. So now we have our output set. Now we can go around and play with everything else. Okay, so I'm going to go in. You can see I've already got everything labeled here. Um, now for the potato, these two channels, hardware input four and five, you cannot change the name yet. Okay, that's a little feature of the beta right now. But right, so we're going to go ahead and select the microphone. Now my microphone is a USB microphone. It's an AT2020 uh, USB plus you can also, if you have a, a microphone that's an XLR mic um, and you're using a, uh, a DAC, a digital audio converter that you have this plugged into, is a, or preamp, you call it preamp, uh, that you will have an interface with your computer, you would use that interface, okay, instead. But for me, I'm using my microphone uh, right here, and I will set that. And so now you can see the VU meter going up and down. Now, you want to play with the signal a little bit. Um, I'd recommend in Windows to not get above, say, uh, 50 or 60. Optimally, you, you want to control your signal-to-noise ratio. Um, on this side, you don't want to boost your mic super high because it's going to pick up a lot of background noise. Um, so if you need to do any volume adjustment, you want to try to do it on this side, not at your microphone. Um, so right now I have mine set for 60. It's picking up a little bit of background noise, but um, I have so much uh, signal over noise that, you know, you'll have a real hard time hearing it unless I totally stop talking. Okay. So you can see the VU meters coming in there. Uh, there is no yellow or, uh, you know, transition from green, yellow to red on the VU meter. It's just green straight to red. Okay. So I would... Uh, Right now, it's about halfway in between the green zone there, which is actually pretty good. Um, so I'll leave that right there where that's at. Now, you can see these little buttons here are highlighted. Uh, you can see if you turn them off, they're gray. If you turn them on by clicking your left mouse, um, they turn this uh, kind of aquamarine color. Okay, so that's how you turn these switches on and off. These equate to your different outputs that are over here on the lower right side of the potato UI so you have five hardware outputs that you know line up with your five hardware inputs and then you have three hardware outputs that go along with your three hard hardware inputs okay so that's nice to know and you could patch this microphone to any one of these or if I wanted to do all of them at once which I don't know why you would want to but you could okay so you can do them all simultaneously. You can do one at a time. You can do any combination. It's really that easy. So if I were to hit A1, that is now going to the speakers off my uh, streaming PC. If I were to turn my speakers on, which are off right now, then I would be able to listen to myself. I don't necessarily want to do that because then you get feedback. But that's kind of how this works. Uh, typically what I do is I set a virtual output. Okay. So in my case, I always use B2. I like B2. I don't know why it's just personal preference, but I always set B2 for my microphone. Okay. And you can see that it is now outputting to B2 because you can see the VU meter lighting up on this side. Likewise, you can control the output gain by the slider here. Okay. Right now it's set at zero or infinite, what we'll call it, or infinity. So anyway, that's now you know at least that that signal is going to B2. All right, so now i got my microphone plugged in. 
My philosophy when you're doing this is work on one signal at a time. Get it working everywhere you want it working. Okay, so for me, I want my microphone working on Discord. I want my microphone working on my streaming PC so I can send it to OBS. And I also want my microphone going over to my gaming PC so that I can then patch it to my game for in-game voice comms. You know, that sort of thing. All right, so... I've gone ahead and set my B2 output, virtual output. Okay, so now I'm going to use this thing called V-Band. All right, V-Band is a, it's called VB Audio Network. Okay, or, uh, and you can turn this on by clicking on the little V-Band button, left clicking. You get this little interface. Um, go ahead and let's turn V-Band on again by left clicking this little button, and it changes to V-Band is on. Okay. Now, this is important to know what your IP address is on both your streaming PC and your gaming PC. Uh, this is my stream PC's IP address, internal IP address. Okay, so you'll find your gaming PC on the same network, you know, side on your gaming PC. So you have to go to physically to your gaming PC and find that out. Now, my gaming PC's IP address is 112 instead of 113. All right, so... I want to go ahead and set up my microphone to output, and this is going to go over my network, because so out into my Ethernet cable, into my router. My router then will route it to my gaming PC, connected on one cable, you know, one network into my gaming PC, and then it'll come as an incoming stream into my gaming PC, and then I can then route it to a physical or virtual channel if I want to, which is really nice. So right here, I have outgoing streams, okay? So I want this to go to my gaming PC. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn this channel on. I'm going to select my source as B2 because that's the button here, right, that I have turned on. And I'm going to name this simply Mike. And let me tell you now, this stream name is case sensitive, okay? Your... This has to match exactly, okay? So make sure that wherever you're using this, on your streaming PC or your gaming PC, that this name matches exactly because it's protocol, network protocol. They have to look, they have to match exactly so that, you know, both sides recognize each other. All right, so I've got that. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And then I will type in the IP address, 192.168. Dot zero dot one one two that's where i want to send it to okay and you should get a little green light okay green light you're good all right so now i should be able to go over to my gaming pc now i'm going to go ahead and switch over to the gaming pc real quick all right so this is the gaming pc now you can see this is all set to default again let me go ahead and like i said set an output so i'm going to use my headphones. Now my headphones are going into my uh, sound card here, which is this uh, ASUS Zonar DGX. So I am going to set that. All right. Now that is my A1. Okay. And let me go ahead and turn all these buttons off just so I can not get anybody confused. All right. So now let's go to V-Band because now we're working on v-band here and let's turn it on let's turn uh let's turn this top incoming stream channel on because now i want to pull in my microphone coming from my network and the cool thing about this is is if it if your signal is coming in it, you should be able to recognize it by right clicking and you'll get this little pop-up and this will auto fill just like that now you get the green light that is good if you do not have a light then you might have a firewall problem okay and you need to go into your router and figure out how to open a port open this up so that it, your uh router is not blocking this okay that's typically most people's problem if they don't get a green light or they typed in something wrong uh, but if you right click and you don't see anything check on your streaming pc side make sure that it's right and turned on um, if you still don't see it, more than likely it's a router issue. Okay, but in this case, it's working great. I right-click, there it's there. Now I have my microphone, I have the green light, and 
the destination is set to N number one. Okay, so here are your options. You have your five hardware inputs. You have your three virtual inputs. Okay, so N1 is the first channel here. And as you can see on the VU meter, my microphone's working. It's coming into this channel. Okay. So if I wanted to set it to N2, I just do N2, and now it switches over to number two channel. Okay, which is really cool. All right. So N1, let me do this. There we go. Clear that out. So I got N1 uh, selected. So hardware input one's coming in. And now I can route this to any of my eight outputs, the five hardware outputs or the three virtual outputs. Okay. Again, I always route my microphone to B2. So now B2 is the output. Now this is also called in Windows voice meter virtual output uh, aux or VAIO aux. I'll show you that right here because this is important. Okay, for all your default playback and default record, you're going to want to set your record device, default record device to your output. Now here it is in Windows, voice meter aux output. And it's VB audio voice meter aux VAIO. That is what B2 is. B1, take away the aux, it's voice meter VAIO. Okay, that's the only difference. And you can see it right there. There you go right there. That is your B1. They yet have B3 working. Okay, B3 does not work currently. Okay, it's only B1 and B2. So set that as your default device, and you can see your microphone is now registering in Windows. What does that do for you? Okay, so any program that you're using on Windows that just uses your default record or default playback device, it will pick up anything that you send to what you have set. So I have my default record device set to this B2 aux output. So my games that you cannot actually program a specific uh, setting to, it's just going to use the Windows default. So any game that uses in-game comps is now going to recognize this B2 aux output from voice meter as my default instead of me going and setting a specific microphone, for instance. Also, same thing goes for your default playback. Um, and this is why I use um, any default playback i use this left channel here which is voice meter vaio as you can see um, i go again in the sound settings you can see the output device is set to the voice meter input vb audio voice meter vaio okay which is this channel here again vo vaio number three does not work yet only these two work okay so just keep that in mind right now Hopefully in September, I think a new update is going to come out and we will get that full functionality, hopefully, along with some new uh, voice uh, of VACs. So it was really cool. All right. So this is now my default playback. So any Windows audio will come into this channel. And if I want to route it, um, say, to my headphones right here, I can now listen to audio coming in. All right. So I've got my mic set up. Now this is pretty much how I have it on my gaming PC. It's really the only reason I'd want this to come over is so that, you know, if I'm using VoIP in a game, they can hear me. Okay, that's it. All right, so let's go ahead and switch back over to the streaming PC now. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's get our microphone set up on OBS. So I'm going to use Streamlabs OBS for this. Uh, pretty much a lot of people are switching over to Streamlabs OBS. Um, if you're not familiar with it, uh, make sure you go and check out Streamlabs.com. Download the latest version. It is in beta right now, but let me tell you, there's so many. It's feature-packed. I mean, it really is. It works great. Uh, so here is uh, Mike Ox. It's one of the default channels. It's uh, there. So what you want to do, go to your uh, little gear here and right, uh, left-click on it and left-click on Properties. And for some, now, I don't know why... And I think this might be related to voice meter, uh, but it, no, Streamlabs OBS or and OBS Studio, neither one recognize uh, the default setting. Okay, so what I'd recommend doing is instead just going and selecting the uh, B2 output or your whatever output you select for your microphone. And mine is, of course, voice meter aux output. And just hit done. 
That's all you need to do. Uh, you can see now uh, my microphone is coming into Streamlabs OBS. Uh, you can see it on the vo uh, VU meter, and then I can control volume up and down, whatever I wanted to do there. Uh, so what I recommend, instead of patching your microphone directly, uh, using voice meter potato is because you're going to be able to have the ability to use some special effects here in f uh, future versions. Now, reverb is currently in. You can actually turn reverb on, and I could turn this up, and you should be able to hear some crazy reverb, okay? Uh, so currently, you know, there's only reverb here, but you'll be able to add some delay. You'll also be able to add external effects in the future. So that'd be like an, a, a VST host rack, whatever, which is really cool. Uh, so I recommend you using that. Plus, it gives you more uh, flexibility with audio um, here where you can add some gain. You can add some compression. You can add a little noise gate if you have some background noise you want to get rid of. Uh, those are all built into voice meter. And so that's why I recommend you use the voice meter uh, instead of direct feed your mic into OBS. Okay, so now we have Mike going into OBS. We have it working on the game PC side. And so now what we would want to do is then go and do the same thing to Discord. So we'll bring up Discord here. It takes forever. And so we'll go down here to settings. Click on the little gear again. Go to voice and video. And here... You'll want to go to input device. You want to make sure this is again set to whatever output you select for your microphone. Okay, so I have the voice meter aux output. Okay, which is aux, which works really well. And then um, you can go in. Let's see if you really want to test it. Let's see. I'll go into my Discord. Let's go into the Frugal Live Stream channel. And what I'll need to do is I'll oh, why did I do that? What I'll need to do is get my foot switch over here and then press it, and it should go green, which means it's detecting your microphone. So, yep, I've now pressed my foot switch down, and it is detecting my microphone, which is good. Okay, if it was not detecting your microphone, um, it wouldn't go green. Likewise, you can also go to voice and video, and instead of using push talk, just do voice activity. And I talk, and you see it's detecting, and it goes green. Okay, so there we go. You know the microphone's working there, which is awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and minimize Discord. All right. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up our Windows audio and our with that would be gaming audio because that you know all your game audio is going to come into voice meter now. So you're going to want to set where my mouse cursor is not here, you're going to want to set voice meter VAIO or voice meter aux VAIO as your default playback device in your gaming PC. So right now I have voice meter VAIO set. Again, let's go to sound settings, and you can see it right there. Uh, there is the aux VAIO if you want to set that, but I have mine set to VAIO. I always do it. It's just the way I do it. Okay, and I have volume turned all the way up in Windows. All right, so now... If I were to play any YouTube video, any Netflix, anything like that that uses default playback audio automatically, um, it'll come into this channel. So I have a video. Let's turn. Uh, this is uh, some mansion. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's get to some music here because I had this. There we go. Going in. So now I've got this video playing and voila, the VU meter right here shows the signal coming in. Okay, so then I can now route this to any of the five hardware or three virtual outputs. Okay, so head, if I were to make sure this wants to work, I will send this to A1, which is the headphones that I'm currently wearing. And there you go. I now have uh, music going into my headphones, which is good. Now, of course, you can control the, the volume level or gain level right here on the slider. Okay. Like... I said earlier with my microphone, you can set this to any single, any three, any combination, all of them at one time. It will send that signal to any of these or all of them, any combination simultaneously. It does not matter. So um, typically I do have this set to A1 because I like to monitor everything except for my microphone. 
typically. I like to I'll listen to my microphone, make sure it's working good, make sure there's no crazy sound, and then I'll turn it off because I there is an inherent latency involved in this. So if you're listening to yourself through voice meter, you're gonna have a hard time talking. Okay. It's not it's not bad latency, but it is there and it could make things difficult for you. Okay. So I've got this. All right. Going to A1. Okay, that's all right. I'm going to turn it off so I can actually think. But now I can send this to another channel. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn A2 on. Okay, so now this is going to this output, which I have yet to set. But what I want to do is I want to get this audio to my streaming PC. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, most people are going to use one of these two ways, either through a capture card uh, that uses HDMI output uh, from your video card into the uh, capture card, okay, on your streaming PC. Or they're going to use a new protocol called NDI, which is, uh, I think it's Network Data Interface. I think it's what it stands for. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about setting it up for a capture card. Now, I have an Elgato HD60 Pro on my streaming PC. Okay, so with that, my gaming PC Windows sees that is an HDMI audio output. So let's go to A2 and let's find uh, here is WDM E24 NVIDIA high definition audio. Okay. Uh, you could, you hear, you see Elgato NVIDIA high definition audio. That is what I want right there. So select that. And now I should be outputting to my Elgato. Okay. Now, the best way to check this to make sure it's working is, again, to bring up OBS. Okay, so let's switch over to the streaming PC. All right, and let's bring up OBS. And let's look at Elgato. Now, I currently have Elgato hidden. Let's turn that on, which you now see my gaming PC. And I should be able to go down. And it should be picking up the audio from that music video that I was playing. And let's unmute it. And there you go. There you see the audio input coming in from a game PC. So there you go. Now you have audio coming into your streaming PC directly into OBS through your Elgato. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's mute that. Now, the second way to do that, okay, is through this thing called NDI. Now, I have a separate video on going through and installing NDI and all that. I'm not going to explain that here, but I will show you NDI. All right, so let's switch back over to the game PC. All right, so the next way that you can do this is through using NDI. Now, I talked about NDI. Uh, NDI, you can download a... Uh, there's, there's really actually a few ways you can do this. Uh, the preferred way that I would recommend most people trying, and it's probably the easiest, is downloading NDI's free scan converter. Uh, you can do this by downloading the NDI tools. I have a whole video on doing this, so I'll provide the link down for that also. Uh, but uh, once you get NDI installed, NDI scan converter installed, and the redistributable, okay, you'll get that installed, uh, and what you'll do is you'll see it running in the quick launch here. If you right-click on that, you got audio source. It selected the system audio. So this thing is automatically sending audio over your network, and any device that can detect an NDI source can then pick that up. And in this case, I'm going to use this on my stream PC because Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio both support NDI now. Okay, so easiest way to check this to see if this is actually working um, I already have this set up on OBS Studio because I'm actually, this is what I'm using to record what you're seeing right now. So let me switch over to the stream PC. And let me go ahead and let me add this. Um, let me slide this over so you can see. Now I'm using OBS Studio here. And sorry for the tunnel vision. But let me go ahead and set this NDI source. And I'm going to just add this existing. Um, and you, what's going to happen is this is going to now change to my gaming PC because NDI also does video over your network, which is really awesome. Okay, so here is now NDI. And just to check the audio, this is what it's called. It's called main display. 
Um, I've renamed it, and I have the audio muted. So I'm going to quit talking, and I'm going to un- unmute this, and you should hear the audio that is playing on the gaming PC. Lots of shoes that I haven't even opened yet. Um, All right, so I yeah. Like shoes. So this is the I audio now tell. coming over your network, coming into OBS so this Studio. Is the or main part of the house. Stream it is the, the same thing. kitchen. The right, so let me mute of- that. So that is uh, the basic two ways that you would get audio over gaming audio from your game PC to your streaming PC. The big key with this is voice meters. Again, you got to have one of the uh, virtual inputs as your default playback. So that is key. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to set up now is our uh, comms going from our stream PC over to the gaming PC. Like I said, I have my headphones that I'm gaming with, and now, you know, I want to hear people talking to me through those headphones. So here I have a channel dedicated to my Discord. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, go into Discord, go into your user settings, then select voice and video. And for your output device, this is the uh, playback audio coming out of uh, Discord. I'm going to use another virtual audio cable now. I'm going to use one of the paid ones that you can get. Uh, This will be cable A. So I'm going to select this cable A input and hit escape. And it should be good to go. Now... Let's go, and now that we have cable A selected, I want to also select the output of that cable to come into voice meter. So right, uh, left-click on that. You want to use either the WDM or use the MME. Do not use KS. Uh, so go into, here we have WDM cable A output. And so now if somebody were to talk into Discord, okay, while you're in there, um, you should hear their playback audio. Uh, all right, so the thing I like um, about using another piece of software like uh, TeamSpeak or Skype is that in because Discord you cannot test the playback audio, but with Discord and Skype you can, or with uh, TeamSpeak and Skype you can. So here I'm going to use Skype, and so let's bring up Skype, and uh, again you're going to want to go to settings. And you're going to make sure that your uh, playback or speakers here, in this case, is labeled speakers, is set to your cable A input, okay? And then let's go to test audio. Turn speakers off here. And we should go to voice meter. And I've just hit the test audio button. Now you can see the signal coming in. So there you go. Um, that is your test. That is your audio coming from Skype. So, you know, your cable path is working. Okay. So, uh, discord should work. Okay. If somebody were to talk to me in discord, it should come in and there you go. So that is how you can kind of test to make sure that that path is working. Uh, so that is, uh, now discord going to, uh, your into your voice meter. And then you can, again, route that wherever you want. Now, I have this set to speakers. Um, Let's go ahead and set this to A2. And I'm going to do this because I want to now send this uh, through V-Band. And let's, I've already got this set up. Um, Again, it's the same steps. You want to select an output. So let's set like B2 here. Um, I've named this comms. And then I have chosen, of course, my uh, IP address for my game PC. So I'll turn this on. I'll get the green light. All right. So now let's go ahead and switch over to the gaming PC. Let's go into VBAN on the gaming PC. Let's turn on this stream. And then again, I should just be able to right click. And there is comms. So comms are going into in number three, which would be here. I have comms set up for number two. So let's change that. Okay, so now I have in number two, and again, if I were to bring up Skype, so let's test that again. I'm bringing it up on my streaming PC. I'm going to hit the test audio button, and you should see the VU meter right here go green. So I'm getting ready to press it right now. So there you go. There's your VU meter. 
now lighting up on the game PC. So, you know, the path now works. So I should be able to click this and I should be able to hear people talking to me through Discord or Skype or TeamSpeak, whatever you use. So awesome. So now I have my comms coming over to my gaming PC through VBN. Okay. Uh, so let's see. I've got mic. I have music set up. I have Discord set up. And I have all of this also coming over to my um, gaming PC. All right. Awesome. All right. So the next thing, well, let's go ahead and work on getting uh, music over to uh the live stream here because uh it is important you know a lot of people like playing music on uh twitch or mixer or whatever you're trying to use so let's go ahead and i like to use spotify uh, for my stuff so spotify let's go ahead and bring that up okay so now that i have spotify up this is where you're going to want to use a virtual audio cable all right so I personally, I have three of these installed. Okay, and you could check these again, go under sound settings, go to sound control panel, and for uh, playback, you can see, let's see, where are they at? Right there is the three cables that I have. Okay, these are cable inputs. Uh, the cable outputs are actually what you're gonna to use to plug in the voice meter. Cable inputs is where the software would output into the input of the cable if you can understand that but again uh you'll have to get these installed okay it's fairly simple the video link is down below on how to do that okay again i have three of these you get this one for free these two you have to pay for okay and i think i paid five dollars for both of them okay so anyway Let's go ahead. Uh, oh yeah and I meant to show you this. Okay so what you want to do is once you get Spotify up um, and you actually, the first time you're doing this, you need to play a song. So I want to turn this, let's just turn this on, go back into sound settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom under other sound options, and you're going to have app volume and device preferences. You click on that and Spotify should show up with the song that you're playing and the artist. Okay. Now you got to have output and input here that you can actually set, um, as a designated input for your software. So here, let's go ahead. Oh, and I did not mean to do that. Let's go ahead and set uh, the cable input. This is the free one that you get. Um, cable A and cable B are the two paid ones. Okay, so cable input is now the uh, is now the default output. And if I wanted to input this, I could set a default. That's fine. Just uh, the big thing right here is you're going to want to set the default output. Okay, so it's outputting into the cable input. All right, so now that is set in Windows, I should be able to go down here, and I already have music labeled. Um, if you want to rename these, just right-click on it, type in whatever you want, and then hit Enter. Okay. So let's left-click on and you, this, and you get your inputs that you want, and let's find the cable output. Okay, so this is, again, this is VB Audio Virtual Cable, the free one. And now let's turn the volume up and you should, we should see stuff coming in the beat meter. Oh, turn the speakers off because I just blared myself here. All right, so I turned the volume all the way up. Now you're getting full signal into your channel here in voice meter. Again, let me turn this off. Okay, so... Again, I can route this to any of these eight outputs, the five physical and three virtuals that I want. Okay, so I can send this to my speakers, which I did and I had them turned on and you could hear it. <laughs> or, you know, again, you can set this anywhere you want. So uh, now music, uh, you want this going to your uh, live stream. Uh, so you want to output this. Uh, I would recommend, okay, if you have a speaker, you can send it that, but you can also set it to uh, any one of these other outputs. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up. Let's turn all these off. All right, so let's go ahead and we can set this to B1. And this is your choice. You can do this one of two ways. And actually, let me show you a better way to do this. Okay. 
And here's why I recommend you do this. Right, so let's go ahead and set an output. Um, so you get, let's go ahead and set B1. I'm already using B2, so I don't want to send my music to B2 either. So you want to keep these split. Okay, so let's go B1. Okay, so now you can see I have signal going into B1 over here. All right, so now let's go to OBS. Let's bring up Streamlabs OBS. And you can see I already have a thing set for music. Let's go ahead and I'll sh let's go ahead and get rid of that. All right, so let's go ahead and I want to make an audio input capture because I want to now set an, a specific music channel going to my stream. So I'm going to add that source. And let's call this music one. I've already got music set up here, uh, but let's say you're breaking a brand new one. Let's go ahead and name it music one. Let's add this source. And here we'll go into properties. Now I want to pick the output I set. So I set this to be one output. So that is voice meter VAIO, not the aux VAIO, but just regular VAIO. And then hit done. Now I should be able to go up and let's find this. And you can see music once playing. I'm going to turn this down. Okay. So now you know you have music. You have a specific music channel in Spotify. Now, there's another way that you can do this separate, and this is totally your choice. Um, and this is kind of independent of voice meter. You can actually go and select uh, your cable output again. Okay. And your cable output will output to whatever devices you want it simultaneously on in parallel. Okay, it won't slave to just one piece of software. It'll, it's there for any piece of software. So I can output my cable, and hit done, and I've done that. And now again, I have cable output. Okay. So prior to voice meter potato, I would recommend you doing it the second option. Because you could control volume independently from your stream and what was going into your headphones. Um, you could turn it down in your headphones. It would not affect the live stream. You could turn it down in a live stream. It would not affect your headphones. Okay. Well, Voice Meter Potato has something a little different that they have added. And I'm going to talk about that here in a few minutes toward the end of the video. Okay. So I would actually recommend instead of doing this. Okay. And this is, again, it's really just personal preference. But just to take advantage of the new features of Voice Meter Potato, I would recommend you set this to a to the uh, VAIO. Okay, so I've got that set. Okay, so now we have music going to the live stream. Okay. All right. So the other option that I would like to do is I would like to have this going to my headphones. Okay. So I've already set an output of B1. I've already got a output of A1. I don't need to do any other outputs. I can just use V-band. Okay, so V-Band, let's go here, and let's go ahead and turn another channel on, and I'm going to, I can select either one of these, it doesn't really matter. Um, for this instance, let's go ahead and select B1, since I think B1 is going to stay on all the time anyway. And I can right-click on this, or left-click on it, I'm sorry, and let's name it Music. And let's right-click. Now, once you get V-Band turned on on both sides, you should be able to right-click on these and it'll pre-fill it. So here I right clicked and it's called, it brought up my uh, gaming PC IP. So I turn that on, you get the green light. Okay, so now this is getting fed over the network uh, to my gaming PC. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over to the gaming PC. And now I need to go into VBAN and set an incoming stream. All right, so let's turn this channel on at the top here. And again, I should be able to right click and see music from 192.168.0.113, which is the streaming PC. I have a green light. Now let's set this. Uh, I have this set to hardware input number four. Now hardware input number four is working. You just can't name it anything right now. All right, so if as you see, I now have audio signal coming in. And if I were to turn this on to the A1, which is my headphones, I have music. And it works great. <laughs> All right, so let's turn that off because I don't want to hear it. So now I have my music going to my headphones if I so choose to, to do that. All right, which I do. That's how this is my normal setup. 
All right, so let's go ahead and switch over to stream PC. We have one really last thing I can think of that we would need to set up uh, to go across both of your uh, streaming PC and your gaming PC, and that is alerts. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and I've got Streamlabs OBS here. And the great thing about it is, is you can actually test your alerts. So simply by hitting the follow button, um, you can test, you know, whatever alerts you have set up in Streamlabs OBS, including the audio. All right. So I have that. And what that does, that uses your default playback device. Okay. So that will come in through here. Okay. So if I want to set up alerts, which I have, um, I will need to set up another stream here. Now, you can use, since you're ha you have this going to your speakers, you have this turned on anyway, you can just go ahead and use A1, okay? And I'll turn that on, and let's call this alerts. Okay. Right click, get your IP address for your gaming PC, get the green light, okay? And so now your alerts should come in through here, okay? Whenever it plays, which I let me hit again, and you should see it. There it is. That's the audio coming in right there on the VU meter. Okay, and it is now going into VBAN over your network to your gaming PC. Now, let's switch over to the game PC now. So, we'll set up VBAN there. Bring up VBAN on your gaming PC. Turn number four on. Right click. And let's go ahead and select alerts. Okay, now I have a green light. This is going to number two. So let's find, I've already got alerts set up for number three. So let's go ahead and select in three. And now I will turn this on, cause turn A1 on, which is going to my headphones out of my uh, uh, sound card. And let's test the follow. And I should actually hear it in my headphones. And I do. There it is right there in my headphones. Nice and loud all right so now that was super easy i have alerts set up uh going into um the default playback here under voice meter vio going into the a1 output which is also selected in vban right here going over to my gaming pc and playing into this uh, hardware input number three. It then goes to my headphones. Okay. It's a quick and easy way to get your alerts in. Now, I think this is pretty much how everybody will have this set up. So that once you do this, what you're going to do is save everything. Okay. So go here, click on menu, save settings, name this something. For instance, I've named mine stream settings. Okay. And save the configuration. Okay. Now, for me, I already had it existing. I'll replace it. Do the same thing on your game PC, and let me switch over to stream PC, and do it on your stream PC. Okay, same thing. Save it all. All right. That way, if something happens and for some reason you lose the configuration, you can go back in and load it by going to Menu, Load Settings, and then selecting the file. Okay, it's that easy. All right, so that is your basic setup now let's talk about some of the other little neat little things that you can do and i refer i talked about this earlier when we were setting up the music and why i preferred setting this to an output and i'll show you that here in a second okay the last thing that i wanted to show you is this uh, master bus selection that you can do in your master section here this is a new feature in Voice Meter Potato, and this is, gives you another option of controlling different outputs for different bus selections. Uh, so what I'd like to use this for, and uh, I talked to you earlier about using uh, two different cable outputs for your music. That way you can control volume separately uh, between your live stream mix and uh, what you're hearing in your headphones. Well, now you can do this in Voice Meter Potato all inside of the uh, mixer itself uh, by going and selecting a different uh, bus. So I'm going to select A1 here. And what I like to do is I'm going to turn down my music. Now let me go ahead. Uh, what I've done uh, in OBS Studio, and I'm gonna, actually well, I've done it here. Uh, so music one 
is going to be set to um, cable A. Let's go ahead and set cable A. And I've also done this in the OBS Studio so you can actually hear it on this recording. Okay, so I've set a music channel for cable A so that um, when I play Spotify, which I'm going to play Journey. Uh, this is a familiar, if you watch these videos of mine, you'll recognize this tune as my ending music. All right. And so this is what's coming in. Okay. Now I am hearing this in my headphones right now. And why is it not coming in on here? I don't know why you can't see it. Maybe it's because I'm already output. That's kind of weird. It should be showing up here. I don't know why. But here, I'll bring OBS Studio down just so you can see it. Okay, so you have the music coming in here. Okay. And so that's what you're hearing. Okay, now, here, if I turn this down, notice the music's not turning down in your live, in the live stream recording here, but I no longer can hear it. Okay. That is what this bus selection does for you. So if you were to go in and uh, do this, you have two separate um, kind of volume controls that you can do, one for your headphones here, and then one set that is the master here that is going to your live stream. Okay, so again, I turn this on, you see that this is down to where I set it, or if I wanted to turn it up a little bit, you know, I can then hear it in my headphones and it doesn't change your thing and i could turn it off and it still is the same way okay that's the way it is it works really good um so this is just a kind of a neat little thing that you can do this is new to voice meter potato you will not do this in banana um that you can now control different mixes to different sources uh speakers whatsoever um so it's really cool um, and I like to use this for music. Now, if you're doing this, using this for other professional things, and the sky's the limit, I mean, you can have a mix for different monitors, that sort of thing, to, you know, on these outputs. And that's what kind of what these are for, which is really cool. And they save them, all that good stuff. So that is really the last thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, so this is a full setup for gaming and your streaming PC uh, using free software that you can download from vb-audio.com again i will provide all the links for all the installation videos for your vacs uh for the voice meter banana that you got to pre-install before you install potato and then the potato link so that you can then download that um this saves you a ton of money okay this keeps you from having to go out there and expend a lot of money on an audio mixer and the associated cables and all that at most if you want to use an xlr microphone you spend that money on a good xlr microphone then get you a digital audio converter a preamp that has a usb output that you can plug into your computer and then you can use that for voice meter it's just the best thing i think i've I, heard a lot i'm in love with it uh, voice meter potato is awesome and when they just get this fully up and running with all the built-in features the built-in special effects all that uh it's gonna be really hard for me not to recommend this for pretty much anything okay as it is i use it for everything anyway uh, it does all i need to do uh but that this will this is the setup uh for uh getting everything set up on both your gaming pc and streaming pc for a dual streaming rig so Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I will provide specific links for each of the individual sources down in the description below so that you can uh, select as necessary what you would like to look at uh, because this video is really long and I do apologize, but this, I mean, it just takes a while and it takes a while to explain all these things because, you know, if you're new to it, uh, it's pretty overwhelming by looking at it. But I think once you get it, you know, understand the basics of what voice mirror can do for you, um, it doesn't matter how big it gets. Uh, it's all just a bigger version of the same basic function. Okay, guys, thank you for watching this video. I do appreciate it. Um, if you liked it, please hit that like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so that you'll know when I put a new video out and, uh, you can come watch it. I do again, appreciate it. I hope you have a great weekend. Be safe out there and we'll see you later.